up guys i did not do a live last week so i'm doing an extra awesome one today just to make up for it we have got sylvia back on this week because two weeks ago we had so much to talk about that instagram cut us off like that's literally what happened instagram cut us off so we had to talk more um and she has just joined now, so hopefully she'll be live in a minute. But my first question is for absolute sure going to be about candles. Because I really want to talk about candles. You will see why in a minute. Sure. Da -da. Internet's not playing the game. There we go. There she is. I did a kind of a slightly premature da -da, and it didn't really go to plan it's kind of sucked anyway how are you i'm good how are you i'm also good i'm on a new phone today i got a new Ooh. phone earlier today and it's like how do you use phones again i can't remember like what they have buttons and that's all they've got uh so i also had to yeah it was it's so confusing i had to explain to the guy in the shop what a 30 310 was do you remember nokia 3310s oh yes i used to have yeah. the 3330 <sighs> yes yeah. see that's for all the cool kids I, I literally i was like oh uh it's an as indestructible as a 3310 thinking that i was being like really cool and hip and friends, and yeah. he literally was like he's like what's the 3310 and i was like you oh, work in a phone shop how, how do you not know this no he was 24. <laughs> I was like, oh, that's why you don't know. Right, okay, cool. That was probably when you were about eight. So now I feel really old. It's so that was quite funny. crazy changing covers and making ringtones. <laughs> yeah, literally. Oh God, <laughs> All the cool kids did that. <laughs> oh my God, that was crazy. How would you covers as well <laughs> yeah oh my god you had to have like the best one right the best ringtone like people used to pay money for ringtone oh, no. I, people bet, still do that. I bet Elon still has it you know even Probably. in his house he's got like loads of phones <laughs> to be on the <laughs> I bet you like you still have your thirty three ten or something. He probably does. To be fair, right? Honestly think I still have mine as well. Um and actually oh, so I had to show this guy what a 3310 was just to prove my point because otherwise I was going to look like a right idiot. So I had to, I Googled it to show him what it looked like yeah. and uh, it came up on eBay and they was being sold for 60 quid. I was like, God, I could be rich here. I've got loads of them at home. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I might sell them. Why not? It's a collector's item now. Oh, anyway. Yeah. Well, enough of the phone and hopefully it will work tonight <laughs> yeah well yeah fingers crossed it's gonna be okay we'll we'll yeah. find out i guess before yeah, I guess long we'll well, i'm sure it will <laughs> there's only one way to find out <laughs> um so uh my first question as i said in the introduction i don't know if you heard it or not but i really want to ask you about candles yes for so obvious reasons um, let's talk about candles so my first right hold on i have actual questions how did you get into it oh yeah real also, how did you get into making candles let's keep the time as well because you know i've got my watch <laughs> let's well see. done last time we totally i mean it was epic but we screwed it up a little bit yeah like not yeah massively okay so okay candles um so i started making candles as a hobby um and uh it was about three four years ago um i would say three years ago actually um and initially i used to be a personal trainer mainly a powerlifting coach um and after working uh, self-employed in a strength and conditioning gym i then shifted into just online coaching yeah however i got to a point in my life where I guess because there were quite a few shifts and transformations in my life, um, my anxiety levels started to increase. Um, and it, I guess 
I would call that now my initiation into that new path of self-discovery and into the person I am now, I guess, and continue to learn and heal. But um, so I realized that actually um, my purpose was in coaching. I think as well, it was, you know, you know exactly how it feels. And, um, oh, yeah. you know. <laughs> when you you generally you want to help people um but when it comes to coaching you really want to look after them in all aspects of their lives so it's not just yeah. about here's your program here's your nutrition there you go and that's it like there's everything involved and especially mental health as well and how they live their life the consistency and accountability um and probably because I wasn't feeling great within myself, um, I felt at a point that I just couldn't help them because I wanted to be helped. I really needed that help for my own mental health. So I started making candles as a hobby just to simply find something therapeutic and mindful, something that kind of take my mind off things a little bit. Um, and I just started doing some research, kind of learned everything by myself, did a lot of testing. You know, I, I remember buying my first bag of um, soy wax on Amazon, um, probably even like with the cheapest of wicks as well, because at that time I didn't even know how much science there is behind yeah. wicks. Um, and how important it is to actually like choose wisely the size of wicks for your candles and the testing that it requires as well. So, um, but yeah, and I found it, I found it really therapeutic. I found it really helpful, especially um, using essential oils. Um, so kind of I got a little bit more into aromatherapy um, and how as well essential oils can be used um not just in candles but also in i don't know like skincare or yeah. even um in uh, i don't know when you're having a bath you can just drop different type of bath. In, yeah bath. yeah absolutely um or you can put it in your diffuser as well um yeah. uh you you know if you have one of these kind of um humidifier yeah uh, you can just put some drops of essential oils and kind of purify the air um, and I realized as well how much uh, were, it was impacting my well-being. Um, so I guess different type of essential oils can really make you feel in a certain way. Um, and I've kind of slowly, slowly discovered that. And I think this is what I always tell my customers now when they get to choose their candle and their scent. First of all, I always ask them um, what what are you looking for? What are you trying to achieve when you burn the candle? Because I think for me, there's there's a whole, oh, you changed your light. I didn't deliberately change the light. The, uh, you were like, Whoa. This is a very interesting revelation that I've found. What? From using a light. It's a good light. And I had a light and the light stopped working. And I'm actually brighter now that the light stopped working. Yeah, I mean, just... So I don't know how that happened. Yeah, it's fine. Just go with that. Um, cool. I guess that's, that's what happened. Yeah. So let's just carry on with the story. Yeah, sorry. Um, so, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, so I guess, um, yeah, as I was saying, I think there's a whole ritual for me behind lighting a candle. So it's not just to make your place nice and cozy. But perhaps it's um, it's a ritual for it's almost like a form of self care. It's uh, coming home to yourself, um, honoring your space, um, yes. or even creating a corner of your home that feels a safe space for you. It's almost like quite sacred, so you get to light a candle. Um, perhaps you dedicate that ten minutes in the morning or in the evening as well to meditate or to journal yeah. or simply be in contemplation with yourself or just to do anything that just makes you feel better for yourself taking a deep breath um so what i usually ask uh, uh, to my customers is what are you trying what are you looking for um in a specific scent so if you're looking for example to feel energized and uplifted then i recommend to go for some um 
mood boosting scents such as jasmine um or for example like lemon and orange is quite a, a morning scent. interesting kind of yeah yeah absolutely um but if you're looking for something a little bit more calming meditative or perhaps quite grounding and almost like balancing to recenter yourself then either lavender and lemon which is actually my signature blend my customers obviously love it all year round they're obsessed with lavender and lemon which is it one of my so favorite. Good. yeah <laughs> but, um, it's one of my favorite as well to make anyway um or perhaps cedarwood and orange um or automestance which is actually a blend of patchouli cedarwood and just a hint of lavender um nice. My idea behind it as well is, um, so I've always spent a lot of time in nature, um, especially at that time where I started to feel really anxious for me. Nature was almost, you know, like grounding, very grounding, going to so be grounding. Yeah, you know, like a, a nice, very safe um, area to go to every time. And it just made me feel so in almost like more connected as well to 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 earth in general um so so yes so the idea behind it is i want to create candles that um and scents that are inspired as well by by my time yeah. spent in nature yeah. as well um, makes so much sense. <laughs> yeah absolutely and and the idea behind the fox so the why the, the reason why i called the red fox as well is because um First of all, I'm just, a lot of people call me crazy for this, but I think it's more just being a highly sensitive person. I do talk to animals. I genuinely do. Um, oh, yeah. Same. And, uh, I just feel Fully. really excited. Yeah. There's something about the energy in the animals, and I've always really kind of admired foxes. And I think the reason behind it is because foxes are just very good at adapting in every single situation they find themselves in. They're very brave. Um, you know, when they look at you, they just kind of like almost challenge you. They stare at you in the They're eye. They're bold, like yeah. so bold, so okay. brash. They're just like, yeah, what are you going to do about it? I'm yeah. right here. Yeah. And you're like, nothing, just carry on with your day. Yeah, <laughs> it's basically, you know, the uh, the wildlife there, like uh, especially here in Surrey, you see them all the time. But um, yeah. I think literally it's their ability to adapt. And uh, so I thought, well, actually – us as humans as well i think the more the more um positive stress we're actually able to induce on ourselves uh the easier it's gonna be as well to overcome any adversity and also we're gonna mm -hmm. be able as well to build more resilience and at the same time um if we constant, constantly push ourselves out of a comfort zone and constantly challenge ourselves, yeah. automatically it's, um, we are gonna be more adaptable. We're just gonna adapt, yeah. to different, especially in situations that we find difficult. Um, or when we start dealing with uncertainties, it is literally learning how to create that safety and work around our triggers um, in a way that we, we also know how to deal with the uncertainties without focusing too much on the outcome and then becoming so overwhelmed that then we're not going to be able to cope. Um, yeah, so that's the idea behind it. And as I said it before, like I, I've, I've said it so many times in general that I think um, Red Fox Handle is an extension of Sylvia. Um, yeah, yeah, that makes I sense. Think my... Um, my business um, has grown um, even more uh, while I was doing my inner work and I was also um, chasing and uh, learning about myself. So doing my own personal growth as well. Yeah. Uh, and the more I learned about my mindset and how my mind works and uh, the more I pushed myself out of my comfort zone, the better results and more natural results are what as well happened in, yeah in well, it's, it's in, you're like almost manifesting things to happen as you're yeah. fixing yourself yeah because you're like this is what i want 
and I'm just fixing myself, but it, oh, then it just starts happening, and it's like, oh, okay, cool. I'll, I'll, that's cool. I'll enjoy that then. You know, like just it just happens. You know, and and then people kind of look at you like, how is she doing that? And you're like, I'm working damn hard on myself. Like it's not just yeah. happening. You know, yeah. but exactly. Yeah. Thing. I think it's like especially when people say oh you you, you have it easy or or like oh you're like, no <laughs> like, there's nothing oh, easy about this yeah I've never been lucky I just you know like we all go through some major yeah. transformations we all go through some really tough times but yeah. um I think the most important thing is especially when it's tough you don't want to give up and you know what I've realized that this is probably the first time in my life where I I really found my purpose, of course, alongside meditation, because then there was a point where I felt called to uh, pursue the meditation teacher training because it has changed so much uh, my life as well. Mm -hmm. And how I see myself and how I see this three-dimensional reality on this earth as well. and. Um, and I felt called as well to just create this space and continue to build this community and spreading the message about mental health and inner transformation yeah. to others. But um, what was I say? <laughs> <laughs> that was amazing. Um, you were saying how you were called to do the meditation um, yeah. coaching and I was gonna actually ask you kind of along that vein, so like not really changing the subject too much, um, but like what made you decide to start selling the candles? So like you, you obviously made them as a hobby, uh, but did you feel like any, so like I'm always really concerned if I, I kind of, I have a habit of, I have a job and then I get an interest and then I find that really interesting. And then I'm like, oh, well I could do it for free if I make it my job. So then I make it my job. And then I'm like, well, I, I have my hobby now. So then I make, I get another interest and then I get really like obsessed with that interest. And then I make that my job and it just goes like this <laughs> my whole life. So were you worried that you were going to make your hobby, your job, and then it wouldn't be your hobby anymore? So it's quite a long winded question. Sorry. No, I know exactly <laughs> what you mean. I think it just, it just happened very naturally in the sense okay. that I, uh, I became so passionate about it because I uh, like it. It literally has impacted my yeah. uh, my life and my personal growth as well. Yeah. That I think it's quite natural sometimes that hobbies can then become yeah. a, a, a career goal, like a business goal, um, and and also I think as well we always evolve, we always change. So mm. once you do that. Um, your goals change as well so I've realized as well that it is also okay sometimes to change career path um, and, and perhaps once you found a new hobby and then you might be passionate about it and you want to pursue that as well then go for it of course it's always about prioritizing as well in the sense that you have to be honest with yourself and constantly ask the question um, is is this serving me right now? Like, is he aligned with my current truth? Um, and this is exactly what I was going through as well when I was doing my powerlifting coaching. Like, I've, I've always been passionate about training and nutrition and and um, lifting weights and empowering women um, about that. But at one point, because of what I went through and because of my transformation my truth changed like my my purpose changed and that is also okay I think as well I think it's really good you were probably talking about this with Ali just becoming a hybrid when you have different skills and um and I think that is just so beautiful because otherwise you constantly identify yourself just with like one, one thing yeah one. but if you manage to um you know you you can just be skillful in so many things oh yeah definitely definitely no i i, I agree i agree yeah. it's like um you don't want to limit yourself you know yeah. you want to limit yourself to just one thing 
you have to like think, oh, well, I enjoy doing this, 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 this. But my problem is I enjoy this, 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 this. I want to do all of it at one time. And I don't have time to do that because there are only 24 hours in a day. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. That's my big problem is like, you know, there are not enough hours in a day to do all the things that I want to do. Um, but yeah, you know, that's, that's the problem when you have a lot of passion for different things, I think. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, I think that also, uh, at least for me, it always comes to, um, setting boundaries and just be honest with myself, um, and perhaps just taking my time and, and really asking myself the question, what, what do I need to prioritize right now like there are so many courses that I would like to apply to right now like it's a it's a constant learning and I just want to absorb as much information as possible but also at the same time I realized that if I don't take a moment to pause and actually process and finally like integrate and uh, like in and yeah just process what I've really learned and finally apply it then how am I going to be ready for my next course or for my next hobby you know, yeah so definitely, definitely. It's really wisely how to how you want to invest in yourself and your time as well so yeah definitely definitely yeah. I mean there's a there's a kind of a massive difference between like I love learning but then it's like it's what you're saying like learning's great but you need to absorb the information before you continue learning. So like before you continue on your path, before you decide what you're going to learn next, like it's really addictive. You learn one thing and then you're like, I want to learn more. Like, this is so amazing. I want to learn all the things and you get really overexcited about it and like really passionate. And then you're like, my brain is full. Like I can't actually take any more information in. And now I can't actually make use of the things I've even learned because it's too much it's too much information and yeah I mean like I'm at uni at the moment and that definitely like I'm already like that and I'm like a month into my first term back you know I'm already like oh my god there's too much information like I can't remember any of it and like I love it and I'm interested in it and I love like I love learning and you know it's amazing and I'm like talking to all my like fellow students and we're all like oh, it's amazing it's such a good course I'm yeah. like do you remember what we did last week no Right. <laughs> it's just like yeah. no one runs anything it's like we're all like learning at way too quick a rate you know it's just it's so much to take in uh and i and i definitely think that's a, a, the danger you know you kind of stop enjoying it as much because there's so much to learn but then actually that's kind of one of the pleasures that there is so much to learn and yeah. you're never going to know it all you no. know no, exactly. I mean, you're never going to stop learning, really. And you're going to constantly change and perhaps have new findings. And um, you're going to be interested in so many different topics. And you might at one point just dive deeper into a topic that you never thought you were interested in. Yeah. You know, in like, in your life. Well, this is really Definitely. Yeah. Um, but I also realized that there are so many things that perhaps you want to learn just simply for your own personal growth and not always for your business in the sense that like you yeah. don't learn everything then into a business but you can still be passionate about it um but but in terms of the the learning and absorbing the information i think it's also because we are in this society nowadays where everything goes so fast and yeah. so we are just sometimes we just rush ourselves into things almost like if we just we set ourselves some specific timelines and deadlines yeah. um and uh we we're constantly processing processing information like we're just absorbing information all the time like as soon as you're on instagram and someone just posts something um about you know whatever you're studying and whatever you're doing and you're like oh shit oh, i've got to listen to the podcast and like oh i've got to read that book but wait i haven't i haven't finished the other book but it's okay i'm there yeah. by the way like it's that you know it's like <laughs> yeah <laughs> i am a classic <laughs> for that <laughs> And, uh, I need to and, listen to all the podcasts at the same time. It's yeah. like, you do not have enough hours for that. Yeah. <laughs> We're just like, I've had a, a pile of books. And, and yeah. Like, okay, well, yeah, I'm just going to buy the next book because I think it's just important to have it. But yeah, like, I, I still have a few books here that, like, I haven't 
finished reading. I was going to say my Audible because I always listen to um, I listen to books while I'm driving. It's like I love it so much. You know, like I end up reading reading so much more just because I'm doing I'm multitasking. And uh, every single book on my Audible list is either not started or halfway through. Yeah, but I then, have so many that are all halfway through because I'm like, I it's all shiny things, shiny things, shiny things, and it's like, oh, the, I think the one I'm on at the moment actually is the one I'm gonna the first book I'm gonna actually finish because it's so good, it's so funny, and um, I don't know if you follow much com uh, many comedians, but like I'm obsessed with comedy, like stand up comedy, I love it so much, yeah. and um, there's a comedian called James Acaster. And he is hilarious and so just random. And he's written a book about all the random stuff he's got up to. And it's absolutely brilliant. And I just, I can't, like, I literally, like, um, well, I will literally go out and drive just so I can listen to the book. Because I've yeah. made a deal with myself. I can only do Audible when I'm driving. I can't listen to it any other time because otherwise I won't study or, you know, like, I'll get distracted. Yeah. I'm no, gonna... I have to drive. Yeah. No, I <laughs> And it depends what you're doing as well and um like i i tend to listen to podcasts um when i make candles most of the time i mean sometimes i just put some music depends as well on my mood but um but yeah definitely i'm gonna switch to audible um a lot more because because yes like it's it, it's quite so handy for like multitasking yeah yeah absolutely <laughs> Um, and especially because like i spend a lot of time making candles and if if i can listen to something that um is quite important for me or at least i'm learning at the same time then yeah. then absolutely um or just like being amused you know like just laughing like i, I found most of the, the books that i download are always going to be like like either self-help type or like business or like something that's going to teach me something but then i think that's why i i switch off because i'm like always trying to improve 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 and i think sometimes you just have to be in the middle you know like it's like improve settle improve settle improve settle and i'm not doing the settle part i'm just doing come on improve come on go 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 all the time you know and it's like i'm like a hamster on a on a wheel like this all the time it was a great impression great visual there uh <laughs> and uh my whole my whole phone just started rocking man. uh i'm like a hamster on a wheel that just carries on carries on carries on and it's like okay, I'm getting tired now, but I'm just going to carry on because, like, it's easier to just carry on than to jump off the wheel. And then it's um, like... Um, I know what you mean. <laughs> oh, I don't know whether it's the same for you, but for me, um, I've noticed that I have this pattern um, almost as a coping mechanism, especially when I, um, when I find myself in places of anxiety. Um, it's, uh, it's almost like an instant gratification, but for me, it becomes... I wouldn't say like it. Well, maybe, maybe it's a, a addiction, but like it's an addiction to to learning. But then again, okay, yeah. it's um, it's like my brain is so wired, and I can't switch off. Um, and so I just constantly want to absorb more and more information. And most of the time, it's actually it's actually self help, like yeah. um, you know how to do something for yourself, how to shop for yourself, etc. Cetera, et cetera. Also, because I'm passionate about it, but at the same yeah. time, um. I think this is this is why um perhaps meditation in a way is um, that's the settle part isn't yeah. it yeah because it's forcing me when we talk about inducing positive stress on ourselves it's for mm. it's forcing me to just pause and just just be with myself with yeah. no technology with no information anything um and to push past that resistance and that feeling of just feeling uncomfortable because you are with yourself and your thoughts um and also teaches you as well discipline and to like concentration because constant like honestly that's something that i think meditation helped me a lot is to concentrate um because it gets back as well to when you start absorbing all of the information most of the time it's just because you just want to it's an ego thing but are you actually absorbing and concentrating on something? Probably not. Yeah, um, I'm definitely a culprit of that. <laughs> it would be awesome if you guys could both give <laughs> recommendations 
or your top five audible books it's a good idea to be fair. I, I don't know if we can give i mean we can try let's let's try for a top five yeah top five um, I, I don't i haven't switched to audible books so for me it would just be books um yeah if you're happy with book, that po- book or podcast book, i say book or podcast oh, i end your podcast honestly <laughs> but books and podcast um yeah go for it well, I would definitely say the book that I'm listening to right now, the James A. Custer book, is freaking hilarious. So I would definitely recommend that. And he also does a podcast, Handy, I know, um, with another comedian called Ed Gamble, who is also hilarious but not quite as crazy, uh, called Off Menu. Um, and it's about food. It's funny food. Right? Well, funny food. It's comedy and food. So, yeah, it's... Nice. I both i love comedy and i love food so for me it's pretty perfect yeah um so yeah i would definitely recommend that but if you're going on a self-help um denise hold on let me check her name because i cannot remember it uh denise oh off menu yes the eli knows uh denise Duffield thomas i think her name is have you heard of her she is Australian. Hold on, I'm just finding her. I think that's, I'm pretty sure that's her name. Yeah, Denise Starfield Thomas. She is Australian, uh, but she lived in England for a long time. And she kind of did the whole like London thing and like was desperately unhappy and then worked out a way to use her passion and became a coach, which was kind of like her calling. But she yeah. didn't, she like wouldn't accept it. And then she accepted it. And now she's much happier. And much richer obviously uh and now she's back in australia and she's just she's very like i like her uh i did sign up to her newsletter and regretted it because it's very very salesy and i'm not a fan but i do like her books as like and as a book like it's good but she is quite salesy so that's the only thing so maybe yeah. that's that's the last book that I read before this one but like yeah it's good book and it's good information and it's very like she's obviously very knowledgeable but I don't know it's a little bit salesy for me yeah Um, but yeah I mean it's definitely a good book it's definitely a good book um what about yours uh I mean to be honest most of my books are all about self-improvement and that's nothing wrong with that an investment, a personal growth and, med- you know, meditation, breathing. So, but um, definitely there is a really good book that I would recommend for everybody if you just simply want to be more conscious on how you breathe without going, I know that like perhaps some people sometimes they just get a little bit freaked out still when we're talking about spirituality. So we- without going too spiritual about it and more science-based and just understanding how your body works i would definitely recommend exhale by richie bostock um, okay. he's also called the breath guy on instagram um he's a really nice guy and um he recently um launched this book uh which um uh, yeah, it's very good. It, it, it explains uh, in a very nice, simple way um, about like tests that you can do on yourself to notice how you breathe. Say, for example, if you're a chest breather, a belly breather or a no breather at all. Uh, okay. And um, also you can do tests to understand your uh, carbon di- dioxide tolerance as well and how to build that tolerance as well. Um, and it just gives you very simple but very effective exercises, um, the breathing exercises that you can do in all aspects of your life, whether it's um, because of panic attacks, whether it's anxiety attacks, um, whether it's to improve your sport performance as well, or if you're struggling to sleep, um, even when it comes to sex as well, he gives you it gives you recommendations as well for breathing exercises for that as well. So, um, how yeah. awkward would that get when it's like you know, hey, um, I know it's sexy time, but I just have to do my breathing exercises first. So basically, you can either do it with me, or you can just wait for me to finish. Or be like. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, this is the breathing exercise that you should do, really, not joking. 
<laughs> but yeah, it's it's a bit. But it's actually really helpful if we. If we yeah, yeah, for sure, on a for sure. Psychological level as well, and um, yeah, so that's a book I recommend in terms of podcasts. Again, yeah, I'm a massive fan of uh, Brian Rose, uh, London Real TV. Uh, I've seen Instagram, yeah. He has such an amazing podcast, and I, I love that man. He speaks his truth. He's actually running for mayor now as well. Oh, really? Amazing. Yes. Um, and, uh, yeah, his podcast is uh, it's a bit like, you know, the Joe Rogan experience as well. It's um, yeah. like um, he talks about from, obviously, from... Uh, spirituality and personal growth to um artificial intelligence uh or like politics so uh, a, a wide honestly such a big range of, of topics where you can learn a lot from honestly it's uh and most of these podcasts are really long they're uh, most of the time they're like more than two hours long as well so it's, yeah. it's like listening to a book essentially i kind um, of prefer the long ones because it's like at least, it, well, like, you end up hearing so much of that person in your head, you know? It's like yeah. you're yeah. carrying them around in your ears and you, like, yeah, like, it's like they become your friend almost, you know? Yeah. In like get, a weird way. Yeah, absolutely. And, and perhaps you start resonating a little bit more with either the character if you're listening to an audible or resonating as well with the story of that person who was interviewed. Um, so, yeah. And, the energy as well, the, the vibe that you get from from that specific podcast as well. So, yeah, definitely that. Um, yeah, there's, there's some good recommendations. I hope that's uh, satisfactory for you, Eli. Yes, thank you. <laughs> your question. <laughs> yes, we, we do appreciate questions, of course, as yeah. always. Um, so what, let's go back, reverse back a little bit, just to the aromatherapy. Um, cause I don't really feel like we fully covered aromatherapy because we kind of went off on a tangent as always, standard, as always. <laughs> um, so what, like, okay, what, like, I know, like you got into aromatherapy, like via candles, but yeah. like, do you feel like there is like way more to explore than people kind of realize? For aromatherapy, because I, I guess like there's a lot of stigma attached to aromatherapy, and not so much with candles. You know, like if if, they, if someone's like, "Oh, I have this beautiful scented candle," people are like, "Oh, that's amazing." Whereas yeah. if you're like, "Oh, this is aromatherapy," people are like, "What?" <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just like the stigma attached to it is so like, even though it they're not like too dissimilar, yeah. it's like the stigma attached to aromatherapy is like so much more mm -hmm. so like how have you dealt with have you had any stigma like have you have you felt any stigma attached to it or have you just have people have just been like oh cool you know um, like how have people been I think the only uh I wouldn't say stigma but more sometimes you get aromatherapy can become uh a little bit like a trend I would say so it becomes yeah. um I agree Technically, it's such a, a, you know, it's a, a very natural way to, I guess, to look after your well-being and look after your body as well. So um, it can literally come from ancient wisdom tools, right, that you yeah. can do yourself. Um, but then this has now become the trend to make as many sales as possible. Um, yeah without obviously naming specific you know <laughs> brands oh well, i shame i don't give a shit um, <laughs> i mean i personally don't even know whether it's that safe sometimes like hmm. i would never recommend for example to use essential oil straight on your skin without yeah it yeah it's with a carrier oil Say, for example, with olive oil, almond oil, coconut oil, whatever you want to use, just use a carrier oil to dilute it on your skin. I don't know why I got so dark now on my screen, but whatever. I just, <laughs> this, this is the <laughs> We can just about see you. <laughs> I don't know why it's happening. Um, I honestly don't understand the lights and cameras anymore. Like, 
or actually I, I never did to be honest like it, this is not a new thing I never understood it um I understand it less now than I ever have done let's say that that's all right um so yeah or even just um put essential oil in food like it, it really depends as well where you're sourcing the essential oil from um like you want to make sure that it's coming from a place or a company a brand that you yeah that you really trust um and uh yeah that's that's the only thing that i found um whether in my opinion it should just be just simply natural pathways um even just using like floral water or like just like flower petals or different type of flowers that perhaps you can combine it with water itself um for like for your for your own personal well-being um yeah rather than it, it yeah now it is it has literally become such a such a trend such a thing so um oh big question what do you think of cupping that's a great question thank you um have you had any experience with cupping have i mm. uh yes but not for a uh six seven years maybe yeah um yeah it was a long time ago um yes i thought it was amazing at the time um i just haven't been back not for any reason other than location i move a lot i'm like a gypsy so yeah make Um, that what you will i honestly i i've probably experienced it only once or twice in terms of myofascial release and Mm. the tension in the muscles um but um one thing that for example i like to um try a little bit more and with more consistency is acupuncture instead Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I just want to understand a little bit more about our energy points in Chinese mm. as well. So um, I've had no experience of cupping, but I'm interested in getting it done on my knee. I mean, mm. oh knee, yeah. I, I mean, I it, see how it it, feels. It, so the thing, right? Here's the thing about cupping on small joint, which I know knee isn't a small joint, but like, it's where where I say small joints, I mean, so cupping tends to bring stuff to the surface whereas with the knee because it's mainly bone you're going to be bringing less to the surface which is why i would say maybe acupuncture would be better because it's a small area yeah. whereas on your back um acupuncture is pretty much the same as cupping i would say it's like a similar level i mean it depends where you go yes exactly probably if you yeah. find you find a very expensive place in London, yeah, maybe it could be quite... I mean, just make sure that you go to someone who is professional and knows what he's talking about, yeah. um, rather than, than obviously going to a random person. So, mm. um, I mean... I, I would say look one. on Google, like, look at the reviews. Um, I saw this thing, actually, it was quite funny. Um, it was like, uh on instagram it was like i really appreciate people that write reviews because i enjoy reading reviews but i never write them myself and i was like oh i'm the same i never write them but i enjoy reading them (laughs) Um, (laughs) i I appreciated even more now leaving reviews because i read on my yeah Um, yeah same You realise how much it means to someone when you leave a review and they actually read it and appreciate it. And it's like, yeah. oh. <laughs> you got a testimonial from your client um, and then you yeah. want a review to sell, especially when it comes to small business. or Yes, you know, so important. Yes, our local business, um, supporting... Um, I always get fluid. fluid it really depends where in your knee. So I'm going to say it's going to be nearer the front. It sounds like if it's fluid buildup, it's probably going to be nearer the front of your knee. Um, I would definitely say go to a physio first if you've got fluid buildup, um, which you can, by the way, get on the NHS. However, I have discovered in this time at this point with Corona, if you want to get something on the NHS, you have to fucking beg. 
and keep jumping up and down until they say yes. Just a little tip for you all, who's whoever's watching at this point. Um, you can get things still, and they can do things still. You just have to basically jump up and down until they say yes. Um, not, not just during time of corona, really, but that's how. It well, is. all the time, but to, at the moment, it's worse. <laughs> Like, hey, can I get a repeat prescription? They're like, yeah, it'll be a week. I'm like, yeah, but can I actually get it or not? <laughs> like, I need it. Yes, no, it's always been a case of, even when it comes to um, mental health, um, mm. I've that if you just reach out to NHS, you, you're just going to wait forever. Yeah. Uh, at least that's how it happened to me, that at one point I actually decided to um go private and find someone yeah. private like a therapist to talk to straight away because yeah. if you wait for nhs yeah um, it's had to wait yeah months i would say um, i had that experience also this is about three years ago ish like roughly three years ago i waited for six months to talk to a therapist on the nhs I spoke to the therapist and in the first session she told me that I was too messed up for, for her to help me and I was like well I just waited six months for this thanks and it was like you know when you're just like this is not okay and then I eventually went I, I saw like three others on the NHS and they all pretty much had the same opinion it was just like yeah this is too far advanced and I was like okay <laughs> well, any ideas of what I should do then yeah no. you know it just often they come either as uh they come across as patronizing mm. um, and then you know what i still don't like in you know in especially in our country um they just constantly label you like if you have these massive issue that will never be resolved yeah, um, yeah. and i honestly wish that there could be more opportunities, especially even like in say mental health hospitals, um, especially when it comes to free services, to mm. bring more of these simple uh, but very effective ways as well to uh, deal with pain and um, yeah and um, you know your own healing journey really. Um, so again, even just by simply like meditation, mindfulness, breathing, um, different somatic practices, or like just simply talking to someone and holding space rather than constantly yeah. just prescribing medicines. Yeah. Um, so then you can pharmaceutical company keep making monies obviously and then they're not gonna solve solve the issue because if anything it just creates more addiction um yeah. so, um and that, that's definitely something that i'm looking a little bit more into this because it started to frustrate me a lot yeah um, big time, big time. Um, i think this is always behind the concept of like the, the 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 world and the society we live in unfortunately um in my community so you get labeled crazy hence why they much rather believe they have been yeah. possessed by the devil than deal with mental health issues yeah yeah I'm, I'm that's exactly that's exactly like a hundred percent and that's not just south asian community that's like pretty much like a lot of communities um and it's yeah. um it's uh it's yeah that's that what makes me really angry because for example yeah. i watched this documentary called crazy wise on youtube and i think you're still able to find it and it was showing different lives of uh, people suffering um from depression and just when going through different traumas in their life where they were really struggling as well with addiction um but it was also explaining how, for example, in indigenous tribes, they instead see these, um, what, what we call mental health issues, they actually see them as a gift um, simply because you become, first of all, it's so important to honor that you could be a very highly sensitive being 
and mm-hmm. that was so beautiful to validate and to honor because not not everybody can be you know having a very um highly sensitive nervous system as well yeah um and uh and if anything it just makes you more wise because you're gonna be able to just naturally connect with people even more like you're more empathetic and you yeah. can just yeah. Oh, yeah absolutely just show more empathy and also become more empathic yourself as well and just be more compassionate um and if anything you're going to be able to just create beautiful connections and inspiring as well others to just give in hope and to transform as well that it is a, like i remember i was um i was um reading this book by Tara Brock who is a, a mindfulness and meditation teacher she also teaches meditation in prison for example which is really interesting That's amazing um yeah she was saying that so often suffering is necessary to our healing and 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 because I've probably experienced it myself as well this is how I see it like see it as an initiation it's also called the hero journey right so you are born pure like this pure soul being with no past conditionings with no beliefs um and then you start living your life you get into this western society and no one really teaches you how to live authentically and fully and to show up for yourself and others so you know you go to school you get a basic education um perhaps you go you go through different experiences with your family or caregivers and um people in your life and relationships somehow affect you um and depending as well on how you've been treated you start creating this armor and um yeah. you know to protect yourself so the hero journey is when something happens to you like a, it could be a big situation and it could be the loss of a loved one it could be a breakup a divorce it could be the loss of a job so it could be anything that impacts your life and also your mental well-being and how you see yourself although initially it's very very painful and you don't know how to cope it's um you have to see it as an initiation it's the literally initiation for to to truly discover who you are so instead of living your life as a victim and as in in that you know being your survival self you get to become your true self and it's a whole journey behind it and i i think that documentary explained it so beautiful as well because yeah. it is truly a gift to be to be a highly sensitive being um and whatever you're going through in your life that there is always hope and uh there is always the chance to improve um and to become who you truly who you truly are right so yeah that's i mean what was it called again sorry uh crazy wise so crazy um, wise okay it's available on youtube and on youtube other- okay I think the other documentary as well that you can look at is Finding Joe, where he talks about the hero journey a little bit more okay. detail. Um, Good so, recommendation. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I'm also aware of time. Yeah, I know. I was going to say that as well. I was like, we because my thing, I've got a, uh, like I'm studying with someone at eight. So I was like, I have to be, I have to be punctual today. Yeah. And yeah. So, like uni has like literally taken over my life. So all my studies like this hour with this person, this hour with this person, this hour with this person. And it's like, ah, but so you honestly, you're doing it to be amazing. And uh, like, I hope as well, you are gonna have some time as well for yourself. Um, yeah, yeah, that'll happen. Yeah. Kind At of some point. Know, give yourself a pat on the back and just celebrate what you have been doing. Um, yeah that's it like I am gonna be talking next week actually about um celebrating the little things so like celebrating your little wins so it's gonna so like this week it's self-talk week on my channel um so I don't know I guess you've seen some of the posts but like if anyone that's watching hasn't then if they're still watching right now then they need to look at my posts 
um and yeah so self-talk week and then next week it's going to be like all about celebrating the little wins because like i like to talk about things that we all need and i need as well like we all need no one is perfect we are all like working stuff out we're all like growing we're all progressing you know it's like yeah, yeah. no one's perfect just because we say stuff that might be useful we're not perfect like we're just aware <laughs> aware of what we need to do that's literally that is what makes us human really yeah and i think it's Definitely. also in taking ownership of our own mistakes as well so then perhaps when we learn it then we can obviously translate it to others but yeah it's always learning from my mistakes and just taking responsibility yeah, and that, so yeah. yeah and i have made many and i no doubt you have as well <laughs> oh yeah yeah. I'm a pro at these mistakes. <laughs> right, my dear, let's uh let head out. I need to go study and you need to go make candles, but let's just remind everyone to buy their Christmas candles from you from Etsy. Etsy is the best place. Yes. Yeah. So, I don't know whether as well like in your comments here you want to link up my um Etsy shop, but if Yeah, not- I'll do that. I don't know how to do it, but I will do it. Oh, no, I tell you what, actually, oh, if you click the link of any of the pictures of you on my profile, it will take you to your profile. Oh, yes, of course. Um, but if not, it's also my profile. There's my Etsy shop. Yeah. Where you can purchase my candles. Um, I am currently with... Eli, my boyfriend, who is currently working on uh, launching my website. So we're creating, you know, we're making that happen very soon. Um, yeah, all so, right, Eli. Oh, honestly, we're working on it together. It's, uh, <laughs> really no, honestly, he's doing really well. So I don't I'm doubt really it. He's awesome. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we're launching the website soon. So it will be, a, you know, the central hub for Red Fox Candle. It will be a little bit easier as well to navigate on products and different offerings as well for the future. Um, Amazing. Yes, and if, again, if you have any questions as well with regards to other candles, aromatherapy, well-beings, also just mental health, um, yeah. I'm always here to support. And um, if, you, if you have any questions, I'm always here. So that's what I want to say as well. Yeah. Amazing. Well, I will link your profile and everything in the comments so people can get in touch with you. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, Amazing. Thank you so much for coming back for our second hour. It's been amazing. (laughs) Thank Uh, you. Thank you. I'll speak to you soon. (laughs) We'll take you to the Red Fox Candle Instagram. The top left-hand corner. Uh, Yeah, that's true. That's true. It's right there. I mean, (laughs) (laughs) it hasn't come up on mine yet. It's probably frozen. My internet's terrible. Uh, It will come up. It's all good. All right. Um, Thank you so much. And we shall speak soon. Yeah. Thanks to everyone for watching and listening. Yeah. Thanks (laughs) for joining. Bye. Bye.